East Orange The city of East Orange was founded in 1863. The population of the city has over 64,000 people, becoming the 20th most populous town since 2010. But no one talks about the city, and when it's on the news or when you do a Google search, only the bad things are brought up. The crime rate in East Orange is 31.54 per 1,000 residents during a standard year meaning every four hours a crime in East Orange happens, affecting the city's point of view to people who never step foot in East Orange. I was able to get the opportunity to interview four different people that live in four different areas of East Orange and get their opinions on what they think about their community and city of East Orange from early in their childhood to now in the present, what their plans are for their future, and the things East Orange could do to continue to improve into being well, East Orange. My name is Confidence Burroughs. I'm from East Orange, New Jersey. Uh, I'm Marquise. I'm 18. I grew up here in East Orange. My name's Michaela. I was born and raised in East Orange. I'm 19 years old. My name is Anissa John Pierre, and I'm 20 years old. I go to Rutgers North, and I'm from I guess I'm from East Orange. I'm an education major and a theater minor. I'm now a sophomore at Morehouse College in Atlanta. Currently, I'm attending Rowan University and I'm majoring in communications and advertising and I have a minor in communications. All right, Confidence, what's the first thing you think about when someone brings up or says the word East Orange? Man, all right. When everybody mentions East Orange, I automatically just think home and all of like the memories I've had growing up here, as well as I want to say my friends, the place I visited, and like the things I just done in the past or even now. So anytime anybody mentions East Orange, it's like just memories. Whenever somebody brings up East Orange, I always think about my childhood. I went to school here in the public school system. I went to Johnny Cochran for elementary school. I went to STEM for middle school. And I just think about all the memories I had back here in school. I think of home. I think of comfort. I think of my childhood. I think of where I've been and where I'm going. Like East Orange for me, that just feels like that's my base point. That was my starting point. That was like where I was from. So immediately, you know, it's always good feelings. It's always happy feelings. Um, and I'm always really overjoyed, especially when I meet somebody else that's from East Orange and like a different setting, like outside of the city, because I automatically just feel like we have a connection to each other because we grew up in the same spot. Home. I literally think of home. Uh, I think of... I think of like my peace. I think of somewhere where I can just be Anissa. I don't have to be anything else. I don't have to be like a protector. I don't have to fight the world. I can just be me. And the only place where you can really be is when you're at home. I wasn't living um, in the area that you live in, the East Orange, right now, when you were younger. Well, compared to when I was, when I was younger, uh -huh. uh, it was definitely way more rowdy, like more people walking about, being like loud, having a good time, talking, screaming, yelling, just hanging out with friends, going up and down the street, playing on the block. Compared to now though, it's like more chill because I guess people are, like grown up and it's just it's been more relaxed since like growing up now. Uh, it was a really good environment for me growing up here. I played a lot of sports. I played basketball growing up. So I was always active either playing over at Watts at the park, playing at Hart after school during leagues or tournaments or anything like that. Uh, it was just an overall good experience for me growing up here. Well, I live more towards the north, which is a bit more where everything is. Police station, fire department, Central Ave. So I feel like in the area that I grew up in, I was also extremely sheltered as a kid too. So. It's not like my parents were like, you know, letting me walk to and from school and stuff like that. So I don't really, I can't really say that, I can't really speak to my experience too much growing up in the North because to me it was like growing up anywhere because my parents just kept me sheltered and kept me in this 
bubble. So I never really experienced too much outside of it. I didn't start walking home until I was in like fifth, sixth grade. So I just, um, yeah. I had a weird childhood because I wasn't a allowed to like go out like how other kids. Like I, the first time I came to West Central Park, I was in the 10th grade. Best friend took me on a tour to East, tour through East Orange for my birthday. Cause she was like, yes, yeah, since you've never been around, I'm about to take you on a tour. So I I, I didn't get to go out much. Uh, my mom kept me in school. She had me um, thinking about my books. Wasn't really no boys. You know, growing up like that, I didn't really start dating until like my end of high school. So that's kind of what my childhood was. So other, from most people, you know, they say East Orange was my ghetto, but it wasn't ghetto for me because I guess maybe I didn't experience that. I always used to think of East Orange as like a black suburb, you know. And maybe because I came from New York, and you know, a lot of times people leave New York, come to Jersey to get out the ghetto, and get out the craziness, you know. The city was, there's nothing for you in the city. You know, I'm Muslim, so couldn't be Muslim in the city. You could be a Muslim in Jersey, you know. So that's what my childhood was like. It was good. It was good. I, was, I got to be a kid. I didn't grow up faster than I should have. Had I been somewhere else, I honestly, I didn't experience what it was like to be like a hood rat. And I'm not saying nothing was wrong with the girls that did that, do that, but in starting, I got to be a kid. Did you ever feel like you had to adapt to your environment as you got older? Adapt? Uh, nah, I never had to adapt. I felt like just because of how natural everything flowed, if there was no need to adapt or get used to where you lived because it did, nothing really ever changed. Not at all, not at all. Especially in middle school, going through a whole bunch of like personality changes and stuff like that, there was always a group of people that were always like how I was. So it was never like I had to change to fit into a different group or anything like that because there was always someone else like me. What middle school did you go to? I went to, I went to STEM over on Renshaw. I definitely did feel like I had to adapt to my environment as I got older just because I was different from everybody else just in the way that I talked, the way I dressed, the stuff I was into, and the way that I had portrayed myself to other people. People thought I was different, they thought it was weird, and they didn't really, you know when people come across somebody that is different, their immediate reaction may just be like write them off because they don't understand. They don't myself more like other kids to try to fit in. So I changed the way I talked, I changed the music that I listened to, um, and I remember my parents being like, you don't talk like that. This is, like, this isn't you. But I did that because I wanted to gain the acceptance of people around me, so I tried to change myself to fit into like what everybody else was doing. And you know, soon enough I realized that that wasn't me, and I saw this quote, this picture that said, just because where you fit in, that doesn't mean that's where you belong. So after I had realized that I had went back to just being the way that I was and being my own thing, I'm gonna be that I'm gonna I, I'm gonna be myself regardless. I'm gonna continue to be the person that I am, and eventually I'll find the people who are like me. And if I'm not, or if I don't, at least I can be comfortable enough in myself to not feel like I'm waking up every day trying to be somebody that I'm not. Yeah, you know, I grew up, you know, really sweet, really sensitive, and I felt like I was just too sensitive and too different for everybody else, and I was just kind of on my own lane, and that's how it was. Hell yeah, of course. Um, as we got older, I don't know, it started to change. Maybe, you know, you started, maybe when you were a kid, you don't see everything, you know, you're, your, your, your child, like, innocence blocks everything out. But I feel like as I got older, it starts kind of got a little bit more dangerous. But people always tell me it always been like that. So I had to adapt to, you know, being 
uh, I had to adapt to you know certain places, certain places you shouldn't just be at at night, certain places you couldn't go to, you know, certain things you shouldn't be doing at night, you know. So I definitely had to adapt. And also because I'm a female, and as you grow into your body, this there's certain things that you could do when you were young and nobody was really checking for you that I couldn't do, that I can't do now. You know, if I'm walking outside and I got a pair of shorts on, at 20 is a lot different than how it is me 16 when I had a little boy body, you know? So. Did your perspective of East Orange change when you were younger? If so, how? Damn. My perspective change. You know, I don't, I don't believe so entirely that it like fully changed. But I think it's like East Orange is still the same way as I believed it was when I was younger. Even if like certain things aren't the same or where certain things aren't where they used to be, I still believe East Orange is still East Orange. I mean, it hasn't really changed much. Uh, it might be because I'm not as active in East Orange's community as I was. But it's not really as active as I remember it being. Um, but besides that, not really. Nothing's really changed. My perspective of East Orange has definitely changed as I've gotten older. Um, but East Orange has also changed as I've gotten older as well. So after my brother became a police officer, it was different for me looking at the city. Because I always felt like it was virtually harmless. But after he started going to work and telling me about the stuff that he was seeing every day, the types of things that were happening two, three blocks away from me that I was just unaware of. I did have a different perspective on the city as it started to look different, as I feel it's getting gentrified. I started to feel it starting to look different and starting to feel different too. Just driving past certain places and they're not there anymore. Driving past certain you know, areas and it's being turned into housing. So it definitely, I do feel like my perspective is starting to changing. Um, when I came back home from school, I go to school in South Jersey, I came home and it just looked like, like a, it looked unfamiliar and it felt unfamiliar too. Um, just leaving and coming back and seeing all the changes that were made, they, were, they, they happened so fast that it was just like, I felt like I'm now coming into somewhere that isn't necessarily for the people that lived there since I was a kid, but more for people who are starting to take interest in it now that it seems like a pop. So that was pretty heartbreaking. My perspective on East Orange, it didn't necessarily change. It's just, you know, as you get older, your, your views on life change. You know, I still, this is still my home. This is still my, my black suburb. This is still where I can, you know, where if need be, I could still raise a family here and I feel like my kids would be all right, you know? So that never changed. My core never changed. I just started to realize that there's more to life than just the city, you know? There's a whole world out there that is waiting for the taking, that's waiting for me, you know? So that changed, but my core, nah, this is still my black stuff. So when it came to your school experience, how did you, how would you describe the East Orange School District? Definitely a learning experience. Cause when you hear stories about other people and their experiences like, oh, we never had this, or we had this, and then you look back at where East Orange School Districts were for certain things, it's like, we never really had that. Yeah, wait, what is, like, you have to ask them certain things. So to some, it may be viewed as a disadvantage, like how could you not learn this, or how did you not know this? But to me, I view it as an advantage because you're able to inform me about certain things that I didn't know, but I'm, at the same time, I'm able to teach you something that you never knew about. So I wouldn't say it was a bad thing, but more of like a growing thing. The schools I went to, at least, I could say it was a really good experience. Cochran always cared for the students that were there. You can ask some of the people around. It was just the teachers always cared for us. It was never a bad experience. And over at STEM, it was the same thing. 
not everybody was great, but there was always other people that were great, you know? You always had a group to fit in with. You were never really by yourself. The education, teachers were good, always always cared, made sure you knew what you were doing, and stuff like that. So I'd say the school system was pretty solid. My experience in the district was pretty interesting because I went to multiple different types of schools uh, throughout my life. So I started off in private, then I went to public, then I went to charter, then I went to a magnet or performing arts high school. So it was very different just going into these different types of schools with these different teaching styles and um, the experience that I had with my teachers, especially when it came to my interests, what schools were really supporting it, what schools were putting me on stages, what schools were give, like had the teachers that were meeting with me after school to help me put together these projects that I'm working on. Um, I do feel like I was supported definitely in all of the districts, not all the districts, I feel like I was definitely supported in all of the different schools, but I felt like support and resources changed, varied on where I was going. I moved around a lot in East Orange, not because of nothing crazy, it's just my mom uh, was just trying to find a house that she really liked. Uh, but, so I went to a, a, a lot of different schools. And what I can appreciate about East Orange is we have black teachers. In New York, I, I didn't have a black teacher. There was no, like, I remember coming here and my mom was registering me in Langston Hughes. And my mom was like, what? There's so many black teachers. Like, it was, she was dumbfounded, you know? So I love that about us. I love the colors, you know, of our uniforms. Like the, the orange, I mean, not the orange, the red, the white, and the black at Langston Hughes, that's black people colors, that's our colors, you know? Uh, so I love that, I loved how our schools was uh, named after our, our ancestors, you know? So we learned who we was. And then the schools was oriented in, in specializing with that, with whatever that person was famous for. Since the Tyson School would perform arts and, and uh, Whitney Houston and like Dion Warwick and Johnny Cochran, war, and I, I think something was like an economic school, I'm, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, and like uh, Langston Hughes, Langston Hughes, uh, it was like the school of like literature, or something like that. I love that, how they, they based the schools in on whatever that person, whatever it was named after. I love that. And uh, now when we got to high school, you know, as we got older, you know, people start to grow into who they are. So, you know, schools become different. You know, high school sometimes dictated who you were to become. I was fortunate to go to STEM, so I didn't get caught up in the drama. And if I had went to another school, I could have easily been caught up in some drama. I remember that you brought up your major earlier. What inspired you to get into it? Well, at first, I was a theater major, but then I changed it because I found it more interesting to like and more helpful for me. Cause I I love helping people in certain classes for certain assignments. Cause I know like I can I'm a pretty good mentor and or tutor to certain people, and I've helped kids like do their homework when they struggled. I help people my age do their homework, and I'm even helping people older than me in like the real world, their jobs or whatever it may be, school or work related figure out certain things so I just and I found like a certain joy in helping people so becoming an education major is what made me change. Uh, I'm a computer science major at Morehouse and just I could just as far as I can remember technology was always my thing but it'd be back in sixth grade in Mr. Owens' tech class it was just it was just always something technology related that always got me engaged so that really pushed me to uh, pursue computer science my major inspired me to get into my major was I had been writing since I was young and I've always been writing and I ended up going to Tyson for TV and film and I had auditioned with poetry but I got into the school for TV and film so you know while I'm in there I'm learning about media photography writing directing all of these other things that I hadn't really known about before but I've always been a creative person so I found all of these mediums to express myself with. 
So I got into communication just because I feel like it's vast and I can do whatever I want while still doing something that I'm passionate about, while still being able to start projects that I feel are meaningful um, and that would make a difference. And then, you know, new media as my minor, you know, because I went to school for TV and film. And advertising because I always just thought it was interesting how every single day, all the time, we're getting marketed to and we might not even know it. And sometimes the things that are being used to market towards us are harmful and I want to step in and change the way that that's done. Tell my home. Before I got to, when I was in middle school, I was kind of bullied. So I kind of checked out of school. I kind of didn't, really wasn't fucking with it like that. But I got into this program called the NAACP AXO and I was writing poetry and you know I had people from my town that kind of believed in my poetry and really liked it and helped me cultivate my craft you know my teachers my uh, mentors so uh, when I got to college I was like you know okay I love writing I love literature but it's time to put that down and get serious until I realized that this is who I am. Literature, uh, poetry, um, the arts, that's, that's, who, that's who I am, you know? So that's, I can't put that down. I can't stop being me, you know? And, my, and this town made me that. Going to Cicely Tyson in elementary school and doing plays and having dress rehearsals you know, and them not treating us like babies. They they gave us work, you know, acting work, and it was real work, and they didn't treat us like kids. So, that's why I study English. If y'all didn't know, I'm an English major with a minor in African, actually I'm a double major, sorry. I double major, I'm English, and I major in also African American studies, and I minor in Feel that being from these horns gives you a chip on your shoulder for what you want to do in your life? I think it does because everyone around me has been nothing but supportive and always inspiring like other than future generations to like become the best that they can ever be, no matter what it may be. So for me, I do believe growing up in East Orange, there has always been people that's like motivating you to become what you want to become. So I do believe so. I think it does, being from East Orange as well, it being not really, it, it is a pretty well-known city in Northern New Jersey, but I don't know if it really has the best rep. And being able to put something out from East Orange that's really good bring, uh, makes me feel really good as well about the city where I'm from and being able to represent like that. To an extent, yes I do, but not in a bad way. I actually, over the school year, I ended up becoming a photography teacher and I work with kids from Camden. Something about that, being able to do community work, being able to contribute and teach and inspire in the way that I was taught and inspired, it, it makes me feel like I'm giving back, I'm continuing the cycle of just encouraging and inspiring while also just giving back. And I feel like when that gives me, the love that I have for my city, I carry with me everywhere. The love that I have for, you know, little black, brown, black and brown boys and girls, you know, I carry that with me everywhere. So it just makes me have pride in myself, where I came from, where I'm going, and how I can contribute to helping people, you know, just get to where they want to be, or just starting the project if you're interested, or even just having like a listening ear if you want to start something like, oh, you know, I think it might not be that good. But having somebody tell you it is, that can make a huge difference in how you feel about yourself and your abilities. So I just want to be Maybe two years ago, I would have answered that question like yeah because um you know I was like maybe two years ago uh I would have felt like I had a chip on my shoulder for whatever reason because all this town's so ghetto and people are dying left and right but as I get older I be I'm more appreciative to the blessings that I do have so I don't I don't feel like I have a chip on my shoulder anymore Two years ago, yeah, probably, but 
given what we've been through, the pandemic, uh, some of our friends passing away, you know, I can't, I'm blessed. Too, I'm, I'm too blessed to feel like I still got a chip on my shoulder. If there was anything you'd like to see improved in your community or just in the city of East Harlem in general, what would you like to see be improved? I want to say more city-based activities, like more something of a tourist attraction that we can have like once a year, every year. Because when you go to certain places, like let's say take New York for example, what is New York known for? It's tourists for like it's big skyscrapers, it's the amount of shops that it got open, and it's just the massive experience itself. When you think of Jersey or East Orange itself, it's like, what do we really have to where it will make someone want to come to Jersey? Or someone that's like, you know what, I want to go to Jersey, but I don't, they don't have nothing. So, so what is it that can like draw, like draw their attention to come to Jersey? So I feel as though like more city-based themes are something that like activities to happen over like years, like every once a year. This, this does come back to the school systems. I think a lot of schools in East Orange have kind of gone under a little bit, like uh, education-wise, like campus and heart. Um, I feel like putting more money and effort into the school systems, like technology-wise, because I know we've got to be back a couple generations when it comes to tech. And tech being the thing to push education forward now, I feel like that needs to be a big upgrade and something that East Orange really needs to be into. I want East Orange to feel like it's for the people that actually live here again. I want it to start feeling like it was for the people that have been here since it was considered somewhere that you want to drive past when you roll your windows up. I want the people who have been tenants, like who have generations of families here, to feel like the city is for them again. Because, like I said, as I'm driving through this, I'm familiar with it. Like for people who would have never lived here if its proximity wasn't so close to the you know, So I just wanted to start feeling like it's authentic self. And then my final question for you is, is there any message you want to send to the up and coming, the up and coming generation of East Orange? For the up and coming generation, if you believe you can do it, and if you feel you can do it, do it. There's always going to be haters, there's always going to be people trying to bring you down and try to tell you that's not for you. But at the end of the day, the only person that can really tell you what to do is yourself. Just don't lose, don't lose sight of who you are really. Don't really try and change yourself to appeal to other people. And to just always pursue what you want to do and push as hard as you can, really. You're going to have people here that are going to support anything you do, so you might as well. Don't let anything stop you. Not yourself, not the, your environment, not the people that you grew up around. Not people who aren't doing half of what you're doing and could never do it, but are still sitting here telling you that you're crazy for wanting to pursue whatever it is. Don't listen to them because you, at the end of the day, you're supposed to be in your own lane. And you're supposed to pave the way for yourself and go on your own path. And that's the most important thing, minus what everybody else is doing. So just stay true to yourself, stay authentic, stay real, and that's what's most important. Stay true to yourself, and everything else will be fine this way. You gotta understand where you come from. You know what I'm saying? We come from a town that. So yeah, we got our slums, maybe you feel like this part's of it, that's real good. But we have people that are so great that live here. We got doctors, we got lawyers, we got teachers that look like us. You get what I'm saying? We surrounded by people that look like us, that do set the example. So don't let what you see that's bad be all that you see. Cause that was a problem, you know, two years ago for me. I was letting everything that I saw bad be the only thing that I saw. You know, I stopped seeing the beauty. You know, I stopped seeing what I saw when I was a kid. You know, don't lose sight of that. Don't lose sight of that. And also, there's more to East Orange than just sports. There's more to us than just football players and basketball players. Not trying to say basketball players and football players are not. They're doing their thing, but they're not the only people that do their thing here. You know? There's, there's so many different types of people that can be celebrated, that should be celebrated, because we're, we're not um, monolithic. You know, we're not like one 
type of town. We, we birth so many different types of people. So that's that's the advice that I would give because I wish somebody told me that. I wish somebody saw me when I was coming up. So. As humans, we are able to control and make any decision we want. We have the choice to impact our community, a community of future doctors, teachers, scientists, technicians, ready to help the world, making a reflection on one population as a whole. I hope this documentary was able to influence wherever you live, that you only have one place to call home. And some of us even have dreams of coming back home to influence a community. I know I do, and I always have.